I just want to welcome everybody to this session of the office hours and I'm really grateful to have you all here. The, one of the coolest things is that we always have new group leaders coming together. The goal is to network, to answer questions that other group leaders have, to ask our own, and just to come away with a sense of community really in the end. So to start this one off, I'd like if we could share our name, if we could share the pod that we are currently the group leader for and let's see an icebreaker what about you know the why behind why you're a group leader or why you're involved with this plant peer network I find that really important so i'll go first my name is josh i'm a regional manager and also a group leader of pure sprouts in athens georgia and the why behind why i'm plant-based is I think a lot of people can relate. I suffered with chronic disease. I had irritable bowel syndrome starting at the age of 16 and an upset stomach every day. And I guess I just didn't want to believe that um, the foods that I came to love, like Doritos and um, extra steak and cheese burritos, um, were not the best for my health. And so, you know, it was luck. It was seeking out something that would really help me. And um, when you, don't have irritable bowel syndrome after having it for six years, you know, um, it's pretty powerful to not have chronic disease and not have chronic pain all the time. So that's why I'm here in the movement. And we'll go to Heather. Hey everybody, I'm Heather Patrick. I'm a regional manager for Plant Peer Communities. And I got into this um, because I'm also um, the co-founder of Wild Earth Farm and Sanctuary here in Kentucky. And so we teach sustainable vegan living and we have an animal sanctuary and I think that plant root communities is um, kind of a part of that whole idea of let's kind of get back to eating more natural more how humans have eaten in the past and lighter on the earth so um, not having such a negative impact on the environment and of course um, not um, damaging other animals lives so Thanks, Heather. We'll go to Cindy. Hi, I'm Cindy Miller, and I run Plant Based Gresham. And I would say that I am in this movement for my health as well. So, um, I, me, and my three grown sons, we have a condition called Ehlers Danlos Syndrome, which is a, a connective tissue disorder. It affects the way your body uses and produces collagen and also celiac disease and so just after growing up um, with not a lot of attention to um, health it's and starting a community garden out at our place out here about over 10 years ago just starting to eat healthier it, it really highlighted because i wasn't eating other things i was eating a lot from what we grew and i just noticed a huge change in my health and went on to start um, Hogan Road Community Garden about 10 years ago. So it, this is, we kind of work uh, synergistically in the community in Gresham. So we meet at uh, Natural Grocers. Oops, that's my remodel. <laughs> um, on the fourth Friday of every month. And we're really a pod that wants to um, seek to change our health outcomes through a whole food plant-based lifestyle. <laughs> And uh, can we go to Judy? Judy, are you there? If you'd like to speak, you can speak. And um, we'll just give you a few seconds. And if not, that's all right. We can come back to you as well. All right, let's go to Fran. So I have plant-based method, Oregon. And um, I've been having pod meetings the second Thursday for over a year now, I think, and have had a nice um, cross-section of plant-based doctors speak, including Dr. Will Tuttle. That was super cool. And he stayed all night with his uh, wife and he was in between engagements and I was a convenient location to stay for free. <laughs> yeah. um, I got involved in a plant-based um, lifestyle through the Gerson um, Institute. The Gerson therapy is a nutritional therapy 
to avoid chemotherapy. So people that have cancer or other debilitating diseases um, can use the uh, Gerson therapy. I try the Gerson therapy because I have genetically have high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And I thought if it could cure cancer, it could cure my cholesterol. <laughs> but ah, It's still high. Eight years later, it's still high. Um, and then I was doing, uh, six months ago, I did six months of intermittent fasting, four miles a day walking, uh, huge salads and large servings of potatoes and my triglycerides <laughs> shot off the charts. I mean, it was like, so I am my own best guinea pig. Um, and it's constantly a uh, learning experience. So with the pods and um, really expanding my ability to teach and to look for finding people that feel well, that want to just feel better, instead of targeting you know, stage four, um, I can reach a larger number of people, um, make an impact on people that are plant curious, but still, you know, holding, they're in the gap. Um, so it's just given me, uh, also a community. I feel like the oddball in every social gathering. So I decided to bring the social gathering to me <laughs> and have the meetings in my home and, um, we are typically anywhere from 12 um, to about 28 at this point in numbers. So um, my next meeting is July 11th, and I already have 10 people RSVP'd. Um, so we're, um, and I haven't, I, I really just sent out a, a group invite. Um, I haven't made individual connections yet. So it's, it's exciting to see it grow and see regulars and then have new people find me through the um, Plant Pure Communities website. It was super exciting. I love having that tool. Absolutely. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that and, um, you know, your history and I guess kind of showing that, you know, we're all different. Our bodies act differently and um, what works for one might not work for another, but we can kind of create that community that is at least accepting and understanding of we care about the food that we're putting into our bodies and right. we're going to think about it before we just eat something. So thank you for sharing that and your story. All righty. Well, today we have just four questions and I'm just going to mute everybody and you can unmute yourself if you want to answer this one. So the first question we have today comes from Dolores Rich from Pikesville Plant-Based. And Dolores just wants to know, how do you get group leaders to come to meetings? It's a common question that we get asked all the time. And, um, you know, this is your time to answer it if you have something. And you can click unmute. Did Here. you say group leaders come to meetings? Group members. Group members, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I keep a sign-in sheet when people come mm. and um, and then I keep record of who's been, who has contacted me through the website um, or through my Facebook group that are interested. I can't come this month, but I can come next month. So I just keep a running tally. Part of them I'm hitting an iMessage, part of them I'm hitting a text message, part of them I'm emailing, but I make individual contact with everyone on the list. And I think that drives my numbers higher. And if I can make that contact before the first of the month, that gives them really almost, you know, 10 to 14 days to really get it on their schedule and not have an excuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but even at the end, there's still um, the numbers fluctuate at the end of last minute that I can't come, but people are really good because they've got an immediate way to connect with me of whether they can come or not come. Absolutely. I love that idea of, um, you know, just you can make a Facebook event, you can ask people to come online in this group thing, but when you reach out to somebody, and I guess you particularly, your Facebook 
picture, you know, it's got your face and you're t- talking to people and they're like, okay, look, Fran's talking to me. She wants me to come to my event or to her event. And, um, you know, I, I realized I had a group that was unrelated to plant-based, but when you text somebody, you're like, hey, can you come? And not a group text, but just a single person. It feels a lot more personal, like they care, they want you, they're inviting you. Whereas I guess just kind of creating an event seems a lot more impersonal. That's a really great point. I really didn't, you know, hadn't thought about as much until now and something I'll definitely implement. Anyone else want to share something that works for them to get people? Well, I have a, a opportunity every month. We kind of check in with each other and we all share our uh, strengths and weaknesses and our struggles and as well as, you know, learning new information and, you know, having, we don't always have food to gather around, but we often do demos and things too. So Absolutely. there's that. And just ha- kind of having a different theme every month. And, but everyone knows pretty much that we're there for community and that we all check in with each other. So it's more than just a, a, a meeting, you know, it's actual personal kind of a accountability with each other. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. And, um, so I guess to answer this question, I want to share something that um, you all can comment on as well. And I'm going to pull it up. It's an image. So this is something that I often think about is the fundamental human needs now. And you can feel free to unmute yourself at any time, but there's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There's different types of needs. But this one's by a Chilean economist called Manfred Max Neef. And he says that the first need is subsistence, right? Food, shelter, water. And he says this one is probably the most important in his mind. It's the same as with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so if people in your group do not have enough money to eat food, let's say, or for shelter, or you know, they're, they're not getting exercise, let's say something like that. If they're not meeting those basic needs, it can be very hard. If there's no transportation to your event, um, they're not going to come because they're not meeting those needs. But once we are able to meet these needs, then for Max Neef says that all of these other ones interact with one another. And so think about protection, right? Feeling safe. If we can create a community that's safe for people, and I think Plant Peer Communities does a great job of that, you know, following the group leader code of conduct, um, knowing that you're not pressured to be a perfectionist or pushed any one direction. Um, you might not, you're not going to be marketed to um, in the group meeting, you know, helps people to feel safe, right? And um, if you don't feel safe, then you're not going to come back to that group. Um, and then there's affection, you know, getting that personal contact. Maybe it's, um, again, here, the understanding that what's going on with you, how are you doing? And um, I, don't know, I guess, Cindy, you can chime in, but, you know, it doesn't sound like you're going to be telling people what they're doing wrong necessarily but you're allowing them to kind of check in right and say this is what's going on with me and there's that shared sense of understanding right that that goes on that you don't get that right Fran like in the in the oddball situation you don't get that understanding on a day-to-day basis and um, it can be really hard to to meet that and I think you know as a group if people do come and they do feel understood especially people who might not be 100% whole food plant-based and might be apprehensive, you know, if they can get that understanding, then that can be very meaningful. And again, participation, right? Um, You know, people like to receive, but we often say that giving is one of the greatest gifts. And I know that leading a pod feels nice to be able to help and to contribute. And um, and even if no one comes, it's hard to participate, right? So (laughs) group leaders can feel kind of burnt out when, um, they want to help, they want to make a difference, and they're not seeing it. But equally for people in the group, right, if they're not able to somehow get involved or contribute to other people's well-being, um, they might not prioritize your event over something that they can meet that need. The next one I, I find is leisure. So, you know, maybe if it takes two hours to get to your event, that might not meet people's needs for leisure. Um, or if they might 
um, you know, some group leaders can have an issue with putting in a lot of time planning a huge event after they're already working 40 hours a week. And then if they're not able to meet that need for participation to meet other people's needs, then it can easily, you can easily become burnt out. And then creativity too, they, you know, if you create new dishes, you come up with new ideas for your group meetings and um, find a breakthrough. You know, it can, it can be very hard to do that if you don't have time to relax yourself. So, um, you know, if you're finding that you don't have time for leisure, it can be very hard to become creative. And the next one's identity. You know, a lot of people, they might say, well, like, am I a vegan? You know, am I a plant-based eater? How do I want to show myself to this group? And how do I want to show myself to my friends and family? And it can be scary in this time where you're adopting a lifestyle and an identity that maybe your friends and family are not adopting. The last one's freedom. You know, if you're told, I, you need to come to this meeting, otherwise, you know, <laughs> so whatever is going to happen, there's going to be some sort of retribution. If you don't come, then it can, it can all play a role. So I like to think of these different needs. Um, and if they are all met, you know, you probably have a very successful pod. And, um, and so also thinking about the fact that group leaders, you have to meet these needs in order to be successful. And then the group members also have to meet these needs in order to enjoy their lives. And the strategies that we take to meet those needs will be different for ourselves than from our group. So I'd like to hear what you think about this. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen and allow some people to talk about what you think about those needs and what comes to you. Okay. Yeah, I'm muted. Go ahead for it. Um, I find at my potluck that the community of people coming together to visit is a huge part of the meeting. <laughs> Getting people calmed down to um, listen to a speaker sometimes is really difficult. The noise level of multiple conversations going on at the same time is <laughs> overwhelming. Um, but I mean, I mean, just the energy that comes into my home is, um, you know, I just think it, it creates endorphins for everybody that's here. No one gets left standing off in a corner. Everyone is included. And, um, you know, the, the space is small enough that you just can't stand in the corner and not be involved. Yeah. So, you know, it really does feel like a big family potluck. And it, on a smaller group and I only have you know 12 people we just we talk about what we brought as a food and what's in it so if they're new to the group and they're bringing things that possibly aren't um, it, it's a bit of a learning curve and yeah. I, I really try to um, have people bring things that are salt oil and sugar free mm -hmm. um, so it's an education and um, I've also asked for it to be flour processed flour free mm -hmm. so I do a little bit of education um, at each meeting of resources that they can find for those those kind of and I've printed out my go-to youtubers so that it, it's really educational plus it's endorphin building plus we've got um, a speaker that comes in and um, so we're hitting a whole bunch of notes in about a two, two and a half hour period. Yeah. And what I'm finding is I'm now having to extend it to come a half hour early if you want to chat with me before people get here. <laughs> so yeah. It just turns into a zoo. Yeah. You know, so it's um, everybody's got different needs and comes with different questions and different starting places. So, um, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. and I and I allow my numbers available for anybody to text with questions throughout the month. So there's a con continuing connection. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I so think we're, all, the, we're the same at our pod, you know, kind of on the spectrum from anywhere from raw vegan to people who are newly diagnosed with a medical condition that are really trying to make changes to their health outcomes. So we're, we say at our pod that you're the best expert of you. So most people come as themselves and experience the pod as themselves. Love that. 
Thanks for sharing. And I want to take the time to introduce, introduce Janelle. Um, I can unmute you here. Would you mind saying your name, where you're from, the pod that you lead, and the why behind why you're here today, really, in becoming a group leader and sharing in the whole food plant-based lifestyle? Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm in Utah, a little town called Camas, and I started Camas Valley Thrive. We have not had our first meeting yet, so I'm just working on this week, picking a date and location. And from talking to the other pod leaders, they said it's probably best if me and then some co-leaders try to provide as much food as possible for the first one. And um, I trying to figure out if we should have a speaker or not or just socialize for the first meeting um, but I'm doing it oh, for so many reasons right I am so um, passionate about the health side of it and that's really what turned me onto this in the first place and how my education process began and then as I the more I got educated the more I realized the cruelty that happens for the animals and I love animals. So that's, that is now just as equally it's motivating part of it for me and the environment too. I mean, there's just, there are just endless benefits to this lifestyle and I, I love it. And I want everyone else to know it. But not everybody else wants to know it, <laughs> but we're going to try as hard as we can to get, you know, people there who believe it and then try to get new people there too to start the education process and hopefully Camas Valley will become this is Greta. Hi Greta. Oh, Thanks for joining. Hopefully Camas Valley will become more plant based in the future. Absolutely. Thanks for introducing yourself and um, just to remind everyone I'm just gonna mute people and then if they want to speak they can just click on mute in the bottom left. And so I think it's perfect timing because Janelle asked the question, what are some of the best things to do to get started? And luckily we have group leaders here with all varying levels of experience. And um, you mentioned, you, you've heard that having a lot of food is a great idea. And um, you're kind of debating whether you should have a speaker or not. Whether, is that, that's kind of maybe a question that you have. Okay, great. So who would like to answer that and give Janelle some advice maybe? Well, I think what we do at plant-based Gresham, well, being at natural grocers, we can, we have two options. We can run a class, which is promoted by natural grocers. So people walk in and it's very educational. So I usually print off uh, papers from the toolkit. We have about 10 standard documents. I give every new newcomer a packet and a pencil and a little pad of paper so they can take notes. And, and then another um, option we have is we do events, which is when we hold our private events, we can meet there and bring our potluck dishes. But when I hold a class, everything has to be purchased at Natural Grocers and prepared there. So I'll prepare something, like I, I'm doing a demo or something, I'll buy everything and show people how to make something, like we're doing our sauces and dressings this Friday. And, so that's kind of fun is that everyone always gets an educational packet to go home because there's so much information in the website. There's a lot to the website too. So um, it can be overwhelming to people to, to try to go through all the information. So we kind of hit the highlights of what each document is and then people can do more reading on their own when they get home that's and then they come back the next month and tell us what they learned and share their journey. So. <laughs> I really like, um, how I guess the idea came to me that you're in natural grocers, which is a space that not many group leaders get to. And because of that environment, you know, it can, you can offer something where people might think, okay, this is going to be educational. And I've been to one natural grocers, I guess. Um, is there one in Medford, Fran? Is that, sorry, what? No, yeah, no, we, we do. We have a natural grocers. Um, we also yeah. have a food co-op. I'm a board member at our food co-op, so it's my preferred, it's where I started my meetings. Um, it, we have a cafe, but it's so noisy in there. And my first meeting, there were three of us, and we quickly moved out to picnic benches outside. 
And then, you know, I met twice there and then the weather changed. So I moved it to home. And as soon as I moved it to home, people were like, yeah, I'll come. <laughs> yeah. So it was, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I have talked to natural grocers about meeting there because they do have a really great classroom space. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I, as long as I'm not competing what with the topic, I mean, they're basically a supplements company that has expanded into grocery store. Mm -hmm. Um, so as long as I'm, whatever the topic is, is not competing with what they already sell. Um, you know, they, they're open. I, do they charge you a fee, Cindy? No, it's no? not. There's, there's no fee. Nice. Oh. Yeah. I yeah. asked because I've been to that natural grocers, <laughs> did not know the history, but, um, but yeah, so I guess Janelle, maybe a question for you is, um, where are you thinking about hosting your upcoming event? That's an excellent question. Um, there is a natural grocer, but it's half an hour away and most of my contacts and friends live here close by. So mm -hmm. I think I'll use that in the future once we get more established right here in Camas. Mm -hmm. um, take it to, over to the natural grocer every once in a while or a couple times a year. But I'm not sure yet. It's either going to be in probably in one of the co-leaders homes or there's a restaurant here in town and we're a small town, but there's a restaurant that serves lots of vegan options. Mm -hmm. And so they have a separate part of the restaurant. And so I'm thinking of, talking to them and asking them if maybe they could have several different vegan options prepared and people could come there, buy their meal and have a speaker while they eat. So that's another thing I'm thinking about, but I don't know that I could do that on a regular basis because I don't want everyone to feel like they have to pay every time they show up. Absolutely. Right. Our co-op didn't require that a person buy a meal. Okay. And they've, they're kind of in a, an area where people take naps on their sofa in the cafe <laughs> that are transient, you know, so it's, um, yeah, they're, they're pretty open. And I think even finding a park with the park bench is a great place to start, as long as the weather is cooperating. That's a good um, idea. Yeah, so it doesn't have, no one really has to host it, and as long as kind of do a central location. And, and then, um, you know, it's, it's easy just to bring, you know, hummus and crackers. Also, it doesn't have to be, um, an elaborate layout that happens in my kitchen. People are just absolutely, I can't even believe the cartwheels they're doing with the dishes they're bringing. <laughs> it's super cool. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is, well, we have a feast that gets laid out and is just colorful and just, Super exciting to, to see people making this effort. And when people are working, I told them, you know, they're like, I don't, I'm going to be coming from work and I'm coming there and I'm like, bring a watermelon. You know, corn is in season, get some organic corn, but just bring corn. It doesn't have to be cooked. You know, people, if they've never tasted raw corn before, this is a great opportunity to, you know, so it can be just a single ingredient. It doesn't have to be an elaborate um, recipe. Absolutely. And um, well, I guess this conversation moved towards natural grocers, which we don't have one in Georgia. But I guess the point that I was thinking of is that the environment like your home, you know, seems more homey towards like a potluck. Right. And, you know, if you want to be educational, maybe people are going to a home unless there's like the home of a doctor or they know a doctor or somebody like is going to be talking about health. They might not expect that whereas if they go to like a library or they go to a stadium seating you know so i guess considering what kind of atmosphere you're creating and what people might be asking for i mean and you can ask if you have like a facebook group or an email list what do you want out of this you know are you primarily here for socializing and to come just eat healthy food or do you want to learn you know, about what's going on. And I personally don't have a TV, but if you have a TV, I'm sure you could gather around and watch like any of the videos on YouTube that talk about the whole food plant-based lifestyle over a meal. And also I really like what Fran said, and I do this too. 
I say bring a whole food plant-based dish. You know, if you don't know what that is, here's a website where you can look up tons of recipes. And if that's still too much, bring a whole plant, you know, bring some fruit, bring sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes. You know, we can steam them up real quick. Bring corn. I definitely advocate for people to bring corn. You know, something that either you don't have to cook. Um, Recently, I had an event and it was a hike which was the easiest of all because I said, just bring fruit or vegetables. It's going to be from 11 to one. So you can do lunch afterwards, you know, and um, bring a whole food that we can all share together. So we had watermelon, bananas, carrots, celery, that kind of thing. And that could take some pressure off of you, but I guess have a backup plan unless it, in case it's going to rain or storm or something like that. I think that's a good point. Oh, no, I was just saying, I think that's a good point to just, you know, try different things. Every town is different. Every community is different. Like, see what works for you. See what um, your pod um, members are interested in and and try different things and, and see how people respond. So try different locations. And I would say, you know, before the first meeting, once you decide your location and your date, give yourself, you know, at least a month to really promote it and promote it to um of course like your network but around town and places where you think that people might um be interested in the pod might might go to um and then yeah just be flexible and and um be patient and see you know like i said if people react better to certain kinds of events and not to other kinds of events and so just give yourself time to kind of build the the community and and um, build a routine Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I found that also that we haven't been successful at having watching a whole documentary, but we'll do up to 15 minutes of something, a part of one, and then people can investigate it more on their own. And Ooh, I like that cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And just try to, you know, get everyone's contact information or maybe make connection with everyone who attends that first meeting so that you could follow up with them send them an email or even have the date of the second meeting ready at that first meeting so people can look forward to that. You could take that time to, to let them know about the upcoming event. I did a, a print, uh, printed out the schedule for the year um, and posted it in my kitchen. I said, take a picture of this, get it into your calendar so that you have these dates scheduled. They're not all of them are the second Thursday because some of the months I'm going to be out of town. So I've shifted it one week or another. Um, and I think that's helped to create a um, continuity of schedule for people. Good idea. I would love to have it planned out as far as I can. Yeah. I also put the schedule on the pod, my pod um, website also. Um, and then I'll go in and I'll update it as I have speakers available so that people can check in there to see uh, what's happening in the coming month. Absolutely. And um, one piece of advice I like to give a lot of group leaders is for your events, do something that would be fun, even if nobody else shows up, you know, whatever that would be, um, especially at the beginning, you don't need to reserve a room for somewhere if you don't know if anyone's going to be making it there. <laughs> that can be really stressful and time consuming. Um, you know, if you were to, have a meal at your house, let's say, and four or five people show up, you know, it's having a meal at your house with four or five friends that you can connect with. Um, one of the things that uh, in the movie Healing America Together that's gonna be coming out that Nelson Campbell's, they're looking for groups that are actually involved in the community. So one recent thing that somebody actually in my pod does is she cooks for the um, food kitchen here locally and prepares, um, salads and gives people bananas and you know instead of people thinking well they're going to be upset if there's no meat she actually says people really do appreciate like you know i thought you had to be rich to eat like vegetables you know <laughs> they think that the cheap food is the animal products and the processed stuff you know and um so she's giving them that kind of salad and and she has volunteers that come help but you know do something that you'd find fulfilling that would meet your needs um, even if only a few people show up, you know, and try and do it with some friends too. Uh, it sounds like you have co-leaders, so. I do, yeah. I need do something fun. 
And I yeah. think that the restaurant idea is really good, um, mm. both because it's maybe just a little less intimidating for people to meet in a public space or, um, you know, not have to bring a dish if they don't know how to cook. But at the same time, um, I just wanted to mention our restaurant campaign because that's a great way to actually work with a local restaurant and have them put those plant-based whole foods options on the menu regularly. So say if they really um, like that, that dine out, then they can, um, you know, put that on the menu and people can keep coming back for it. And then the pod members both have a place to dine out and then the restaurant, you know, has new business and plant per communities, you know, will help promote any um, restaurant that we certify, so. Absolutely. Yeah, and in line with that, let's say no one shows up. Well, actually the people who show up are the staff that are asking you questions like why do you want oil free? You know, what's the point of that? And we've gone and there's been a few people like, why do you want this? You know, and you get the time to educate people and say, look, this matters to our health. It matters to people who don't even know that they're going to be told by a doctor that this is the lifestyle you need to adopt if you don't want to have a heart attack, you know, and mentioning heart disease and cancer. I'm sure everyone in the, in the restaurant knows somebody in their family who's struggling with that you know, diabetes, I mean, just mentioning the big three. And so you see that if you go to an event where there are already a lot of people, although, you know, maybe no one's showing up from your pod, you're still spreading that and making a difference if that's something that you find personally satisfying, you know, and maybe recruiting people who might, you not normally have joined your Facebook page or come through plant peer communities, but they might be at a farmer's market, you know, and they, they might be wandering around the library or, um, you know, just some sort of local event that they're not coming. You kind of go to them, you know, so you'll be around human beings that might have some questions and you'll have some satisfying conversation no matter what happens. Yeah. Perfect. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Are you guys getting the same people coming all the time or do new people show up or do you feel like we're just, what do you what do you guys are experiencing with your pods great question go ahead cindy well i think i i get both so we definitely have um <clears throat> people coming every month for community and that's where we check in and we have new people all the time and i really love when we have people that have heard of us through natural grocers and they just want to come and share their testimony their story you know and i love that one thing we do in our group that i thought about mentioning was that it's really important for everyone to feel comfortable when you're in a group of strangers. So when we go around and share, I just, we share like who we are and, you know, a little bit about our life for the first time. And what I do is we just keep going around because you know how when you're put on the spot, you can't always think of everything you want to say. So we give people more opportunities and I, I kind of keep circling until we get to our why, like what's your why for being here? And then um, that helps them to kind of learn everybody's story. And it's kind of like not an overdose at one time, you know? And then there's almost always somebody that wants to share um, how a whole food plant-based lifestyle changed their life and their health outcome. And Cindy, do you meet at the same time normally every month? We meet at the same time and, and it is, it's kind of a precious space time. So I guess that's another reason why every poll I ever take or uh, people, nobody really wants to watch a documentary during that time. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we count on that time to both be learning and communicating to each other and sharing our journey. So do you have specific questions that you ask or do you just go by what feels good at the moment? Yeah, and it usually depends on what we're discussing that month as well. So, but generally, you know, who they are and, um, you know, what they do for a living and with their family and how they heard of a whole food plant based movement and, you know, uh, things like that. And um, one nice thing is that Josh is really good at sending us uh, pod meeting notices. So every month you have ideas about what you can go over. Absolutely. And we do, um, 
there's some places have more emails than others, but if you let your regional manager know, ask them how many people live within 25, 50, 75 miles of you, and we can send out a MailChimp email. You know, there's some locations that have 100 people. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. Um, my power might go out, but, but um, so there's plenty of locations that have, you know, 100 people, 200 people. There's some that don't have as many people, and that's another resource that you can do as well. Um, Fran, do you want to talk about your um, same people, different people? Um, I kind of, I've got kind of a good core group that um, fluctuates a bit. Um, there's um, always someone new, and it. I, I made it um, two months ago to a, a plant-based potluck in Ashland, Oregon, which is 30 minutes for me, and um, got invited to that one. And um, so I let everybody know that I had a, a plant-based potluck also, and I had several people come from that. I mean, I approach people at church and that I know are relatives of people that are coming. And it's like, you know, your dad's coming. If, you, if you'd like to come, he's going to be here. He's not plant-based, but he was interested in the topic. You know, um, quite often when they're getting an invitation from me, they're not even aware it's plant-based. And I am fine with that to um, have a little bit of a shock factor that they're, um, they're coming to hear a topic um, have food, but it's not necessarily like it's, you know, you have to be plant-based to be here. You know, you just have to be curious to be, you know, so it's like, you know, and, and getting people okay with that, you know, it's like I had a dinner at my house for an event for my husband, uh, for contractors, and for the third year in a row in May, they've come, you know, uh, 20, 25 people that are not plant-based and I fix a plant-based dinner and I am inevitably exposing a plant-based meal to people. When this one of the board members came up to me, just big, broad shoulders, big guy. And he says, I want to tell you, this is the very first meal I've ever had that didn't have meat in it you've opened my eyes to a new way of cooking or a new way of eating, you know? And it's like, I've had one of the board manager gave me a ride from one of, from the airport to an event up in Portland. I, 90 minutes I was in the car with him and he was on Weight Watchers and I got to talk to him about why not to drink diet soda, why to eat plant-based instead of, you know, taking your exchanges and counting those up and since that meeting that that little capsule of time um, he contributes about a 30 pound weight loss success to you know he's not 100 percent plant-based but he's leaning more that direction so i don't ever pass up an opportunity to invite people whether they're plant-based or not you know in any any event or fundraiser or whatever I go to, I'm passing out my cards going, hey, you know, I've got a potluck coming up. You know, you're more than welcome to come. Just message me so I know I've got enough seating. Um, so it's um, really networking even in areas that are not remotely plant-based um, interested. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. and. Um... And so you have the meetings, you said, the same time every month, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, yeah. so I guess it seems like there's people who trickle in. There's a core group of both of these pods. And my pod, my meetings sometimes vary. I'm in the, a college town, so people have different schedules. Sometimes people are out. And so I get a whole mix of different people, and really it becomes, okay, um, I can never do Sunday, so I won't see those people until I do something that's like a Saturday. And I found that maybe six people can do Friday, a different five can do Saturday. And so I change it up to try and incorporate different people. And my schedule is a lot more flexible um, in that way. But 
I guess what you can see is there's no right way to do it and do something that works with your schedule if it works for you. And, you know, having, I, I tried it the first Sunday of every month. Um, a lot of people who went to church didn't really like that. So, um, you know, but if it works for you and it works for a good group of people, you know, do something regular. And if you prefer to um, mix it up, you might get different people just based on their work schedules and their, their preferences of how they like to spend their weekend. Um, so, yeah, I guess I've had different people come every time. And depending on the event I have, you know, if there's a potluck, certain people come. If we're meeting at a restaurant, you can get a lot of people who, as Fran said, like they might not be plant-based, but they're going to come with their friends. They're coming to the restaurant. They're going to eat the food. And it's a lot lower of an entry level than cooking your own dish. Um, and then I had a hike recently and different friends came and, you know, if you post it on your personal page, then your friends who are just friends and coming along might, might come. And, you know, so it just depends where you, where you tell people about it. And I really like the idea that Fran has of reaching out personally to somebody and saying, this is what's happening. Will you make it? I'd love to see you there. At least something like that. And um, yeah, so Kent has joined us. Kent, would you want to introduce yourself? I'll give you a second if, uh, if you're interested. I've unmuted you. And you can just say your name and where you're from. Um, and if not, that's all right as well. We're happy to have you. That's all good. Well, all right. So let's see if we have another question. And I'm hoping my, plow, or my power will continue to stay on. But um, one of the last things that I kind of wanted to share is another graphic, if you will, that might help you understand health behavior. And this graphic is the integrated health belief model. And let's show that right now. So essentially, we have the behavior. People, maybe it's coming to your class. Maybe it's eating the whole food plant-based diet. And a lot of us, we do education. We work on the knowledge and skills to perform that behavior. And then there's the science of the, or salience of the behavior. You know, um, when you walk into the kitchen, how easy is it to see whole plants? You know, is it very easy for you to just eat something healthy or is it really hard? Um, and then there's your intention and decision to perform the behavior. And that's influenced by a lot of things. How do you feel about plants? You know, if this is the first time you've ever had no meat, you know, your feeling might be different than if you've had a salad every single day. And then our behavioral beliefs, you know, is this, is this something that we believe will actually, you know, be healthy and um, kind of instrumental in our decision making? And then the norms, is this what's normal for people? You know, generally what we're doing is not a normal thing. <laughs> and, um, but when they come to the pod meeting and there's 20 people who are on the same page, you've just created a new norm. You know, and that's what we're doing in our, our plant peer communities is creating this norm of we're thinking about the health of what we're doing, you know, and if you go into a school cafeteria, whether your child's raised vegan, vegetarian, whole food, plant based, the norm is whatever's being served, you know, and um, the injunctive norm is what you should do. You know, well, maybe I should be healthy. Uh, maybe we should be eating more plants. And then the descriptive norm is what's actually going on here. And all of those influence your intention. Then there's the control beliefs. Do I even have the control? You know, some people might think I can't do it. You know, I can't come to your event. Um, other people are like, yeah, I can make it happen. Um, even though they might have the same exact schedule. And then efficacy. Do I even know how to eat this way? Will it taste good? All of these kinds of things. And another thing that's not mentioned here is a cue to action. You might go to your doctor and they tell you, you need to change your diet, otherwise you're going to die. You know, that's a cue to action or a Facebook event, right? Saying like, here, here's a fun event in the community where you're in the community, you're handing out cards, you're showing people about the health. So of course, there's all other factors that come into it. But I think as we begin to empathize with people and ask, why don't they stay? Why don't they continue to come? We can start to see that, you know, the knowledge is one we can teach people, right? But if the environment isn't there, if there's processed foods all around them, it can be hard to stick with it, you know? And our habits too take a long time to change. And one of the things that I think Plant Pure is really doing is we're changing these norms right here. We're changing the, 
normative belief of what is healthy and we're changing the descriptive norm of now people have 20 friends who are you know 20 100 friends who are eating this way and it's a normal thing to do in a relative circle you know so in terms of this i'd like to open it up we have like about five or ten minutes of discussion but you know what's something that comes to you on with this uh model i suppose or something that sticks out that you want to talk about well i was just gonna say josh i think it's true that i mean that's what we're all trying to do is change norms change behaviors create community create a space for people to come together and learn and share ideas and and connect and so i wanted to say too um josh mentioned or earlier that we can kind of reach out to any people in your community um, and invite them to your pod but um also, I'd encourage you to connect with other group leaders because we really are a pretty large network of hundreds of pods all over the world. So this is one way to connect on office hours, but another way um, is through the Facebook group for community leaders, or you can contact your regional manager, Josh, me, Kara, um, Ella, and just kind of ask, you know, can you just connect me with any other group leaders in my area so we can share ideas and just kind of support each other as, you know, um, you're leading the pods. Absolutely. In line with that, follow each other's Facebook pages here. I know Cindy and Fran all have very active pages. They're posting great links. You can post the same exact link, by the way. We're doing that. Um, <laughs> love the different videos that you all post and you can even post I mean, Cindy's pictures of their farm and garden, you can say, look at this cool thing happening in Oregon. You can post Fran's potlucks with, um, you know, with, uh, what's his name? Why can't, it's on the tip of my tongue, Fran. Um, well, Will Tuttle. Will Tuttle, yes. And Will Tuttle <laughs> came to Athens too. Um, and um, that was really great to meet him. And, uh, and I posted today on my, on my page a Will Tuttle YouTube that he just uploaded today great. about, uh, alcohol and being vegan is ve is alcohol vegan I love it. Yeah. It, interesting awareness for me when I found out that ugh, they're using animal products to filter yeah. yeah yeah and then to find out there's glyphosate in most alcohol really kind of cured me of yeah. that <laughs> absolutely yeah. thanks for sharing yeah sharing that kind of information and with the restaurant campaign I didn't really know where to go. And I saw an Austin, Texas pod that went to an Ethiopian restaurant. And it reminded me, well, I have an Ethiopian restaurant and we worked with them and she was able to offer oil free options, especially by request. Um, so, you know, if you're not in the group leaders Facebook page, I definitely say join that. There's over 330 group leaders, ask questions and even scroll through to see what people have already posted and asked. There's some great questions and answers and, um, it's also really fun. Tanya Cleary, who's a group leader in, um, what is it, the Keys, she runs, um, what is it, McDougal Friends, which is John McDougal Starch Solution. But there's 30,000 people there and they're all talking about their successes. And um, yeah, it's really neat. You know, there's, um, you can get the support online and you can get thousands and thousands of people. But also at the same time, you know, being in person, meeting with these people, having food right in front of you with one another is just such a great little blessing. So to close this out, I'd like to end with a gratitude. Uh, we can just, you know, say what we're grateful for and um, continue the conversation, of course, online on Facebook and email regional manager if you want to get in contact with anyone in your area. And I just want to say I'm really grateful for all of you coming out today and for sharing your experience, for having the courage to ask questions. And, you know, there's no right way to lead the pod, you know, and um, I just keep learning all these amazing opportunities and getting ideas from everyone here of things that I hadn't even thought about. I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful to hear just all those success stories, just pods that have been doing it for a long time and have monthly meetings and just really, um, who have created a, a, a really good space for learning and sharing and just to hear of the new people just getting started and the kind of excitement that's there for moving forward. Um, I'm thankful for everybody helping me and all the wonderful ideas that you share and giving me the confidence to 
get this going. I am really excited and it's so nice that you guys have this established network. I've been wondering for a long time how I could do this and and the plant for keep plant peer communities was just I was guided towards it. So just really grateful for that. Yeah, I'm really thankful for plant peer communities too. That just the unity that they provide and um, ongoing resources for health and keeping the strength and vitality of our bodies going as we age. I mean, they're so inspiring when you see and think about how old some of these <laughs> members are and how much, how productive they still are in this, in their life because of a whole food plant-based lifestyle. So I'm thankful for that, that we can have this opportunity to promote uh, better health outcomes. Right. Yeah, I'm thankful also for the ability to have a plant pure pod web link that I can share. It really gives a sense of um, authenticity that there is this bigger movement and there's so much information there to go to that I'm just not some, you know, loner out there with some harebrained idea <laughs> that there's a movement and it's a greater picture. And so it really does give a backbone um, resource to, um, that really gave me the strength to put myself out there to start a pod. I was like, oh boy, this is a little intimidating, but to have that web link really made it look official. <laughs> Absolutely, thanks for sharing. And uh, Jennifer, thanks for joining us. And uh, you can just introduce yourself where you're from and something you'll great, you're grateful for. We are wrapping up this webinar, but it is it will be recorded and put on YouTube. Yeah, um, so I'm in the Vail Valley. Um, I actually just took over the Vail Valley plant-based living. And I have an office space where I can have people in here with a really nice kitchen. And I'm really excited because we have a mailing list of about like 100 people that um, probably about 40 show up once every month during the winter times. And, and it's just been incredible for me to have this um, you know, great community, um, trying to figure out how to grow it. Um, and right now is a slow season. So, um, like during this, you know, in the ski resort areas, we uh, don't have as many people in the valley during the summertime as we do the winter. But, um, yeah, so next year we're just gearing up to try and make it a good one. And, um, so just trying to get as many ideas as I can to try and, you know, like, um, grow this movement because I feel like it's so important to like you know help people recognize that we're not vegan we're, we're plant-based you know and it's a it's a I think it's more important for your health and and I'm a I'm a chiropractor so you know that's what I want my patients to be um, doing if I can at all you know talk them into uh, trying it out I know they'll feel better so yeah, that's, that's about my, that's my story. <laughs> and would you like to share a gratitude just to close out this session of the office hours? Yeah, I am so thankful for being able to um, have actually shown up on the day that they were asking for somebody to take over the group. <laughs> and so I'm totally uh, grateful for that, you know, that I, I'm actually able to be involved with all this. Absolutely. Well, we're grateful to have you here and um, don't be a stranger. And I just want to thank everyone for coming out. And again, this office hours is your time to network, to meet each other. And again, if you want to be in contact with anyone who was on this office hours, send me an email. We'll get you each other's emails and, you know, just connect with one another. And when you're traveling, if you're going around the country, say hi. It's one of the most fulfilling things to do to stop by and meet another community. And so again, we have the Plant Pure Pod leaders on Facebook. You can join that group, connect with people. And uh, we try to host these webinars of office hours monthly, or at least regularly to allow each other to answer questions, to network, to ask questions, and to grow. So thank you all so much. And I hope you have a great night. And let's continue growing this movement one bite at a time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Fran. Take care, everyone. Have a great night. Good night.